Hi everyone, good day to you. This is a 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo trim. I have a whole list of complaints. I don't even know if that door lock worked. All right, let's see what we got to work with here and then I'll go through the list with you guys. We'll see what's up. Oh, it's hot inside of this Jeep. Goodness, I hope the AC works. Let's see what we got to work with. Does not run very well. Okay, whoa, look at that. 372,317 miles on the clock. Uh, they got their money's worth, that's for sure. All right, we need ventilation. And air. All right. All right, let's see what my list says down here. I'm looking at customer stage, running hot, thinks it's the fan, just did thermostat, power steering leak. These are all separate sentences. Added stop leak, was getting a lean code before adding stop leak. Uh, maybe power steering fluid dripping on the O2 sensors and poor fuel economy. Those are my complaints. Um, sounds like they're listed in order of severity, so let's get this into the shop before this engine heats up. And uh, we'll let's go see what we can determine about a fan or a overheating situation. And then we'll, we'll move on to the other items from there. So stay tuned, this is probably gonna be a really good video. I don't plan on driving this anywhere because uh, they said it was overheating. So we're just gonna head straight to the service stall. Yeah, this thing's a rattly, clunky old Jeep too. You know, it's funny, in two years, this is gonna be a classic. Weird, right? Powering down. Yeah. All right, next, does the hood latch work? Oh, I called it. This is brilliant. I didn't even set that one up. Wow. All right, how did they change the thermostat when you can't get into the, into the hood? Let's try again. Oh, look, it comes with its own tools. Yeah. Like most Jeeps should. Well, it looks like today is making fun of Jeep day. Sorry, Jeep people. Nobody understands. You guys don't even understand. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, hood latch is broken. All right, so doing this the uh, normal way is not gonna work, so let's have to figure something out. There's the cable right there. If I can just pull the cable, aha, you see that? Not very secure, is it? Jeep, I have defeated your uh, security measures. What do we got here? Four liter straight six. Yep. Needs hood struts. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't stay open. That's not cool. There. A little bit of extra prop rod. That will help. There. Now we're good. Okay. First things first is the cooling system issue. They said something about a fan. Um, it's got an electric fan in there. We'll deal with that later. Let's see if there's coolant in it first. And the survey says, uh -uh. "Yeah, we're low." All right. Well, there's no sense in beating around the bush on this thing. This thing's a very worn out old Jeep. It's got no coolant in it. I don't see any leaks anywhere, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight for the for the block test. Uh, basically, what I'm gonna do is run the engine. And I'm going to use this little squeeze ball here to draw gases from inside the cooling system in through a little uh, diffuser through a solution. A chemical reaction will occur in said solution, changing the color from blue to green or yellow. If there are any combustion gases present in the cooling system. So I'm basically looking for a cracked head or a leaking cylinder head gasket or a long lost doodly 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 doo. Probably not gonna find any doodly doos in the cooling system, but you never know. It is a Jeep. So, let's go start things the engine and uh, we'll start to pull the gases through and we'll see what the tester tells us. Doo -doo -doo, now, I recall this thing didn't sound very healthy when I first started it. I heard some knocking or some misfiring, something like that. So it's a possibility. I'm gonna find some combustion gases here. 
I have to take care to not suck up any coolant if possible because the coolant will react to the solution. And I'll let it reach an operating temperature as I pull this stuff through. If I do not find any combustion gases and I don't get a reaction out of this solution, then uh, I'll refill the system and we'll look around for some leaks. Because that means the coolant went somewhere if it was filled up all the way to begin with. Because our guy did put a uh, thermostat in it. That's what they said. All right, I'm gonna let this warm up. I'll be back in about five minutes. I'm still not getting very good results yet, or I'm not getting a positive. So I am gonna add a little bit of coolant in this and then uh, I'll continue to let it reach operating temp and we will recheck it. Okay, we can circle back to this later. I'm gonna go ahead and close the system up. It's starting to expand a little bit. And the reason I'm gonna go ahead and stop testing for uh, combustion gases is I've got the AC running and it's starting to get a little warm, but I have no electric fan activity. So uh, we're gonna move on with what was uh, mentioned earlier, something about a fan, and we're gonna see why that fan is not running. All right, I've rolled over my auxiliary fans, and that's gonna give us enough airflow over the radiator where it should not overheat. So now that the system is filled and we have airflow, let's see what we can see about this electric fan. Test our meter, meter's running. Now, if we look right down here, we will see the connector for the, for the electric fan. It's right there on the side of the shroud. And on that connector, we've got two wires. We've got a hot and a ground. So let's go ahead and probe those two wires and see if we have ground to this fan or see if we have a positive to this fan. One of the two is missing. Uh, right now I'm probing the positive lead. See it right there? And we have no voltage. No voltage. So it's not getting any voltage to the fans. Let's check the ground lead. Again, we're probing ground. We'll move this over to positive. There it is. So we've got ground. We don't have positive. We have no high. So the fan is not being commanded on. Actually, both circuits are grounded. Look at that. Uh, a relay. Let's see if we have relays for the fans. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. But if we do, they're probably going to be in here. Hmm. Ignition, ASD, TCM power, da 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 da. No wipers, O2, fuel pump. Horn, okay. Okay, I'm not seeing a fan relay here, so let's go pull up the diagram. Alrighty. Gone ahead and printed the diagram. So we've got our fan motor over here. Now that's been replaced. It looks fairly newish, the plastic shiny. I know I've got a good ground right here. So this wire is okay. What I don't know is if I've got ground over here on the relay output. Oh no, no, that's not ground, I'm silly. I do not have power on this circuit right here. This is controlled by a very crappy, oh, that sucks. Anyway, so that's all controlled by the radiator fan relay. Now, according to this diagram that's located below the bumper under the right headlamp, I went to the Google machine and checked on that and it is in fact uh, buried in a location where I cannot get to it. Now, I, uh, I located the fuse in the fuse box. I pulled that fuse. I do have power on one side of it. Um, fuse is good, so I know I have power on the other side of it. So I'm certain we have power going to the relay. I know we have ground at the relay. What I don't know is if we have control from the ECM to that relay or output from that relay to power the fans. So what I need to do to diagnose this is to get a hold of this relay right here and then probe these two wires in question and then see if the failure is at the relay or if it's gonna end up being at the PCM. If I find I do not have signal from the PCM to the relay, then I'm gonna pull the PCM connector and we're gonna check the output there. And again, we've got the fuse right here. That's the 40 amp green one. 
that looks pretty good. That's in good shape. Radiator fan, fuse 40, so we know it's not that. I understand that that relay is down here somewhere under a piece of plastic, and I can agree with that because I can watch the wire, and the wire disappears somewhere, runs down and under, and then I lose sight of it. So I've got to pull all this stuff apart in order to track down that relay. Let me go see what they want to do. Um, it's probably going to be the relay, so I think I'm going to preemptively order one, and then we can move on from there. Before I do all that, I do want to note that it is running a little bit hot right here. Where are we at? Like 215, 220, something like that. And I do have those auxiliary fans in front of the radiator, so it should not be overheating. Uh, I have checked the upper and lower hoses with a, uh, a digital thermal meter, thermal imager rather. We're gonna do that again. And it, I, it appears it does have coolant flow because the imager is showing heat on both of the upper and lower hoses which tells me the water pump is pumping, so I have to wonder if we're actually running hot or not. That's 203 degrees. And then the lower hose, it's also about 200. I think we should see a better temperature differential than that. Yeah, 204, 205, and again, yeah, that's, that's not enough. We may be in a situation here where there's more than one thing going on because I know I have adequate airflow right now, but I should not have uh, an overheating condition and I do. So I'm also suspecting perhaps the uh, impeller blades on the water pump are worn or destroyed, who knows? There's, there's a lot of debris inside of that system. And I think I'm going to include a suggestion where I uh, should remove that water pump for inspection. This thing shouldn't be running as hot as it is right now, even with the AC turned off auxiliary fans in place and the coolant level is full it appears to not be circulating so uh, i would like to uh to pop that water pump out of there and maybe even the thermostat and double check on that too i just i'm not sure yet but i, I know it's not good this thing's in very rough condition okay so i want to get to the uh, fan control relay which is under this fuse box under this battery and behind this headlight i've got to pull this headlight to get to it and now fortunately and unfortunately for me all of this is very broken so it might come out easily or it might be a real pain. Uh, either way, I'm gonna pull it out, so let's, uh, let's get to work. And to make matters a little worse, the bumper is like lift up and it's hanging onto the bottom of the headlight. And I think that's the only thing holding this headlight in is the bumper. I pulled the grill off and the carnage is even worse than I had uh, originally anticipated. Look at all that. This whole thing is just broken. And all I need to do is get the headlight out. Yeah, again, the problem is the headlight's being held in by the bumper. And I need to get it like back and up and then out. And I can't because the lip on the bumper is too big. I, I might actually have to pull this, this bumper piece off, which I don't want to do. I mean, I can see my component. It's like right, it's right in there. It's right there. I just can't, I can't reach. Like we're so, we're so close. I can feel it. Um, out. Why? Got it. Ah, there's the prize. Fan control relay. Right down here. So I just noticed this. Check it out. Somebody uh, chopped this piece of the shroud out with like a like a cutoff wheel in order to gain access to this little module right here. So this has been changed before. That makes me wonder a few things. All right, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna disconnect this and bust the meter back out. And we're gonna check for uh, that power coming into this relay. And we're gonna check for the uh, command on from the ECM also at the pins on this relay. That's sharp. This, uh, this Jeep is definitely not user-friendly. Become disconnected now, please. All right. Dirt. All right, let's verify the circuits. We're gonna start with 
Looks like our gray one on the end, and the gray one is fused power. So let's check that one, fused power. Yep, we have battery voltage at our gray. We'll check our ground here, that's the black one at the bottom. We have ground. So we have power and ground at the relay. This is good. Okay, next I'm gonna go start the engine, uh, run uh, the AC full blast so the ECM tries to command this relay on, and then we're gonna check for power at our second pin, which is the green. I believe that's the, the one. Relay control, no, that's dark blue and pink. So that's gonna be pin three. So this is the signal from the ECM telling the relay to turn on, which will then send power to the fans through the green one. So let's go start it up and uh, see if we have a command signal from our ECM. All right, we're full chooch on the AC, so I should have a signal commanding this relay on. Pin number three. We're on millivolts, not volts. No voltage on that PCM wire. It's pulse width modulated. It appears. Let's check for voltage again. I expected voltage there, but I'm getting a, a pulse to ground. So I'm assuming that's pulse width modulated, which is fine because the relay now has 12 volts output. Check it out. Right there. Battery voltage output. So we've got input and output. We have ground to the relay. There we go. There's our ground and we've got a signal from the ECM or a command. And uh, let's go take a look at the fan, see if it's running. I hear it, but you guys don't see it yet. And check it out, the fan is fanning. And it is now operational. We got our old relay, new relay, and it is now functioning. Just to prove it out, and since definitive proof is never enough proof, I'll go ahead and swap the old relay back, and then we'll watch the fan not work. Ow! Hot. in and fan is off. We confirmed the relay has failed. But why? Because it's uh, not an old relay. Yeah, this is fairly newish looking. I wonder what the deal is. There we go. Safety click. Maybe it failed because it wasn't bolted in all the way and it was overheating. Okay, let's back it up and get out of here a little bit. I'm gonna put this uh, headlight back on, leave this thing running, and then uh, let it come up to temp and we'll see if it still runs in the hot zone or not. So real quick, that way you guys believe me. Here, we'll try again with a longer, longer shaft. I don't know. Get on there. Click, okie dokes, relays in, broken plastics are, well, they're duly doing. I got the headlight connected again, so I'm gonna put this thing back kind of where it goes. It's the best I can, really. Wow. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. Uh, 
headlight jig. Yeah, that's it. The rest of them are broken. But hey, the bumper's on the right side of the lens now. This is good. It's not good. break it any extra like it's not broken more I guess that's it I guess that's good yeah they got their money's worth out of this one that's for sure this thing's been around for a while like I said earlier two more years this thing will be a classic and that is a tough pill to swallow Let's head back inside and check the temperature. All right, just checking back in. It's been a few minutes, maybe, maybe five, 10 minutes or so. And we are starting to creep up just a little bit past the 110. I'm trying to get straight on it. Yeah, we are starting to creep up a little hot again. So I, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can't pull this water pump out for inspection. So uh, let's go see what the guy wants to do here. So we're getting warm again. Okay, so we're restarted here. I'm gonna keep an eye on this uh, thermometer. I'm gonna keep an eye on the temp gauge. We're gonna see how it rides. We're hanging out just under operating temp right now. Uh, I still think this thing has an issue with the water pump and I, I do believe that the impellers are a little worn out or rusted off, something like that. And I hypothesize that that's the case because when we checked the upper and lower hoses for a heat differential using that thermal imager, they were both at like 205, 206 degrees. And I wanna see a temperature drop across the radiator. Now, nope. although the fan wasn't working, keep in mind, I still had those auxiliary fans over there in front of the radiator blowing airflow over the cooling package. So it should have been able to cool off that radiator enough to give us that pressure differential. And that's the reason I speculated that there's an issue with the water pump. So I'm gonna sit here and monitor this thing for a little while. Uh, give me 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna check back in on it and we're gonna see if it comes up to temperature or goes to, to any kind of overheat condition, even with that fan running up front. And that will help me to definitively conclude that there is an issue with the circulation system or circulation portion of the cooling system. And again, I would have to go back to uh, suggesting that we remove that water pump for visual inspection. Pulling up trouble coats here. The only thing stored for that check engine light is going to be a, a P1491 radiator fan relay control circuit opener short. Now that's what we just fixed. So we'll go ahead and clear those, clear that out. There it goes. And that turns our light off. Begin turning off light now, please. Do it. All right, hang on a second, put the brakes on. Party's over, we're done here. Uh, after I told the guy that we needed to do a little bit more work and I wanted to pull a water pump off, uh, the rest of the repair was flat out declined. Uh, it turns out all he was really interested in was making the fan work again. And we did that and that was as far as we were gonna go with this Jeep. Unfortunately, I did not record a scene where I backed this Jeep out and then thank you guys for watching. I'm going to consider that a cameraman fail. However, all is not lost. I will make that up to you. And I will do that by making this video into multiple videos. And then we're gonna go ahead and call that a win and a bonus feature. So stay tuned, I've got another car coming right up. Hello everybody, good day to you. This is a uh, Toyota Prius of some sort. It looks kind of broken out back. I don't think we're here to do body work today. I think something else powering on. Beep. I think it's running. Yeah, probably. This is the uh, second Prius this week. Let's get it in the shop. My guy has not written it up yet. He just said, bring this in, please. Customer's waiting. Ring. Or never mind, it doesn't go ring. It goes bzzz. Or it goes Wow, that was fast. Look at this, 8,658 miles on the clock. It's a very sad Prius uh, Park, Prius Park, there we go. What year is this thing in, 22, 21? Looks like a 
Yeah, 2022 Prius. This thing's brand new. Here, okay. powering down. Here. Let's go assess the damage out back and see what we're doing with this thing. And I gotta tell you, this is unfortunate. Like, this is a brand new car. Like, it's super brand new. Wow. Yeah, I wonder what you guys hit. Like, oh, dang. Look at that. Did we back into something or did we, like, side swipe, swipe something? Side swipe. We siped it. We siped the Prius sideways. Let's see, then uh, over here, what we got over here? We got a donut. So I think we're doing something with a tire. Let me go find out. Be right back. Okay, I have a doo -doo 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 -doo. I found out what I'm supposed to do here. Let's go, floor jack. There's a loose wheel and a tire that's already been installed on. Uh, over here somewhere. I think that's it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that that looks like a Prius wheel. Get the phone, please. I'll do it. I should get a cordless phone, then I'll just answer the phone, I think. I don't know where the hubcap is, though. Right, floor jack, get in. Get in there on that pinch weld, please. That's where we want to be. Right there. Oop. Contact. Moving on up. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. We need some safety. There's some safety. You gonna fit? No. You gonna fit? Yes. There we go. Now we're safe. I accept this. All right, let's see. We need a... 21 and battery good okay socket click all right Let's spin this thing off of here that wasn't tight Doo -doo. that wasn't tight That one's tight, that's okay. Oh, that one's not. Hey, get out of here. Seriously? Well, that one had an impact. That was tight. Wow. Danger. What's next to you in traffic? All right, new tire coming in. Looks like someone already did the work, so I don't have to, which is cool. I dislike tires early in the morning. Click. Fred. Jack stand, we don't need you. Prius coming down. Give our chef a twist here. Here. Slowly. There. Uh, this one, yes. Time for actual clicks. We leave nothing to doubt when cars come in with loose wheels. Just can't have that. Okay, torque wrench cam is back. We're set to 80 foot pounds of torque or pound feet of torque, or however you want to say it. Commencing actual clicks. Ooh, good one. Now I just need to find that uh, hubcap. I'll put this thing back on. Shakages. Get this out of here. Goodbye. 
entering the Prius's back door. I don't see a uh, hubcap or something. There's one. That's what we need. Fun fact, most hubcaps only go on one way. And usually you'll see a, uh, a little valve stem printed on the back of it. Oh, there it is, there it is. See the valve stem and then you see how the ring, the retainer ring has this notch taken out. Some of these notches are larger than this one, but it's still there regardless. Anyway, this is where the hubcap is oriented with uh, the valve stem on the actual tire. So we're just gonna put that right there, like so. Walk it around. Hubcap installed. Okay, let's uh, let's check the air on this before it goes back into its home. Let's see what we got here. Do do do. Thirty-two pounds. No, we want we want forty pounds in the donut. And since they never get used and they leak over time, I'm gonna give them forty-six pounds. Do do do. Again. It's like the anti hitting over alarm. You know it's there, so you dare not come to work with a hangover. All right, how's this gonna go? Let's see, we flip it upside down. It's got a, a bulge here. So let's see what we're gonna do. That goes in there. And there should be, found it, a screw to hold it down. If you don't fasten this down in the event of a collision, this can become a dangerous projectile and injure the occupants. Of course, if you're in that kind of a collision where your spare tire flies out, you probably have bigger problems to worry about in, uh, in my estimation. It can also flop around and make noise. It goes there, that goes there. Good to go. Hybrid. All right, well that makes for an easy one to start off the day. Ow, let's see how this works out. Okay, restarting the Prius. That's that, poof, it's on. Let's see, backing up. Tire pressure lights on, uh, those reset after achieving a speed of uh, 25 miles per hour or greater, so I don't need to do any kind of relearn procedure. Um, it does say it's ready for some maintenance, so Looks like we skipped out on that uh, on that oil change, that first oil change. Oh, for sure. It's even got the factory sticker in it, reminding you to come by for your complimentary oil change service at 5,000 miles. That was 3,600 miles ago, so I'm, I'm gonna assume they didn't do that. Feel bad for this car. Powering down. Pew. This is a uh, Chrysler of some sort. Looks like a town and country miniature van. Uh, customer states there's a warning indicator on the digital instrument cluster and uh, they would like that diagnosed and fixed Ah, you can't have that you guys will you guys will kill me for making that sideways Yeah Uh, where's how do I start this? Oh, no, there's a it's Back there Starting the engine all right all right, let's see what we got here. Uh, let's turn the radio down. Don't we don't want to talk radio right now? Anyway, we got fifty-nine thousand four hundred and thirty-five miles on the clock, and there is a warning indicator right there. It indicates low tire pressure. The exclamation point indicates urgency, and then that is a cutaway shape of a tire. If anybody didn't know, see the tread on the bottom, and then the curves indicating a bulge sidewall because the tire is getting kind of squishy. That's a low tire warning indicator. And uh, it's also got a digital readout. Shows you the right front, left front, left rear, right rear. And it appears that the blinking one is the uh, affected one. It's saying alert, alert, we have low pressure. I think we're supposed to have 36 pounds and we're down to 30, 30, 30, and 32. So uh, I'm, I imagine that there's nothing wrong with this van at 59,435 miles, except for uh, a maintenance neglect issue. So uh, let's, uh, let's just go air the tires up. And uh, 
we will see if that's the reason that this warning light's on. If it's not, I'll go drive it or something and uh, we'll see if it gets like some other kind of warning. But I think this is uh, going to be pretty cut and dry. Kind of like the Prius we just looked at. So uh, backing up is the auto. Tire pressure. Yeah. Just go ahead and nuzzle this thing in right over here. Na, 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 Windows down, all the way down, and uh, and powering down. You know, second thought, this would be a good hangover day. I don't seem to have to use my brain power very much. Powering on digital unit. Oh yeah, by the way, this is a 2016 and it appears, yeah, 36 PSI and 36 PSI. That's what we're looking for. And it looks like we only have 29. Let's add some more. We'll do 36 on all of them and then go for a ride around the block and watch that light turn off. 35. 36. All right. Can't forget your caps. Customers notice missing caps. I'm not mad at you. Next. That goes there. Oh, cap gravity. I lost it. She gone. We got 30. 34 ish. Come on, 36. There we go. I'll take that. All right, let's check out the right front. That's the one in question. Right front tire survey says 29.1. Yeah, that'll set your light off for sure. 29 is the, uh, usually the threshold for those lights. Uh, 37, 38, nope. Now here's the deal, although this is low, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna take it apart and look for a puncture or anything because it's not the only one that's low. They are all low. If they were all at like, let's say uh, 34 or something, and then I find one at like 28 or 29, then I may suspect that particular tire of having a puncture, but since all of these are low, yeah, look, 29 here, 29 on the other one, I'm just going to assume that uh, they sat around for a while or failed to get maintained and uh, through the natural porousness of the rubber they have lost some uh, air oxygen and hydrogen nitrogen molecules thus reducing the pressure inside the tire that's what i think science all right oh well, look another one that got kind of wrecked side swipe Dang. All right. All right. Let's uh let's head out to the parking lot and see if this light turns off. Restarting the engine. All right, warning light. What's up? Let's see. Hey, the message is missing. I almost tongue twisted that. Okay, yeah. See how they're Oops. Let me undo what I just did. See how the pressures have not changed? That means the module inside of the vehicle has not asked the sensors for a, uh, a report, so to speak, or they have not transmitted to the module on what the current pressures are. So we're gonna go drive just a wee little bit and uh, just verify that this light comes off. And I know I didn't do that with the Prius. Uh, this particular customer didn't realize that that was a tire pressure light. I wanna make sure I give him his car back with uh, utmost certainty that the warning indicators are no longer indicating. So we're just going to go achieve a speed of 25 miles per hour, probably right here in the parking lot. Uh-oh, no seatbelt. It's, it's mad at me. 25, 88 miles per hour. Ah, right at 25. Beautiful. Yeah, 37, 37, 36, 36. Uh, I'll take that. That's fine. Okay, flipping, flopping this truck back around. Long range, powering down. Pew. We can give it to the guy with a not a hundred and twenty dollar bill. It's like one twenty for a diagnostic hour of labor or something like that. I don't know. They inflated the prices. They meaning the powers that control our monetary system, and everything is ridiculously expensive. 
I was talking to a guy uh, uh, the other day, he asked me for like an estimate via email for like a timing belt. And the dude was like sticker shocked to learn it was gonna be like 2,000 something dollars. And it, it killed me because back in the day that same repair would have been eight, 900 bucks maybe. And that was expensive. And now you get half the quality of your parts. I dropped that. You get half the quality, twice the expense. Wonderful economics. All right, guys, I'm about to go on a on an economic, socio-political rant. So before I do that, I better go ahead and uh, end this video right now. And uh, in doing so, I will thank all of you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this uh, hybrid video, pun intended, with the Prius. If you did enjoy this hybrid video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If uh, you did not enjoy this video, um, I get that because this was two shorts and uh, there wasn't like a lot of repair content here. So if you didn't enjoy this video, just go into my video library on the homepage and find something else to watch. And maybe you'll enjoy that one. Ending shameless self-promotion. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Ending Chrysler Dodge product repair video.